Do you wish your pain would just go away? Today we're talking about how you can tap into that healing intelligence within us through slow, gentle, and easy movements of yoga. Brian shares how yoga is becoming more of where you play with the experience as you get to know yourself in a different way. So please stick around and enjoy the show. Another episode of Coffee with Tea. I'm your host, Tanya Tan, and I'm excited because we are going to be talking about yoga and the benefits of movement and how we can probably maybe eliminate some of that pain that you have stuck in your body. And there's nobody better than Mr. Brian Shercliffe who can um, give us an insight and his wisdom on how we can do that. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Brian Shercliffe. Welcome. Thank you, Tanya. So glad to be here. Oh, I'm excited to have you here. We met years ago when I thought about being a yoga instructor, but that didn't quite work, but that's okay. You know, you know, everybody's got to follow their calling, but you are the man in Cincinnati that I know a lot of people who are into that um, holistic uh, practice and stuff like that. You're the man. So welcome, welcome. I really, it's a pleasure to have you here. So great to be here. And I'd say you found your yoga. It's just happened to be this YouTube channel. And lifting up all these wonderful people doing all these wonderful things. So good for you. This is yoga. Yes, yes. Well, sir, we like to um first I always like to know how's everybody dealing with the COVID nineteen and how's how's that affecting you and everything like that? Yeah, it, sh- it radically shifted our our business. So we were renting, we'd been renting a space in Norwood for almost 10 years, knowing that we'd probably have to move out the end of this year anyway. So our landlord was selling the building. And uh, just so happened, COVID-19 comes about, and we had an epidemiologist friend who was a graduate of Vitality's yoga teacher training who said, you're never going to be able to use that space for a long time safely. So we moved out, and uh, now everything on Zoom, and believe it or not, our classes are more full now than they were before. So people have more time, and there is a luxury in being able to do some yoga from your own house, too, I think. Right, so right. So it's, you- it's been good for us, strangely enough. It's been a good, <laughs> a good transition for us to figure out what our next steps are. So was it sort of a hard transition going online or, or was it a fairly easy transition? It was easier for me because I was actually in a training that moved on. I was a participant in a training online. So I got a chance to watch how Zoom worked as a participant and um, kind of see the, the issues with that and be prepared for those things. And then we moved online like that next weekend that was still in March. Um, and it's been, it's been good. You know, we actually have international trainings now. So, um, people around the world are experiencing these movement experiences together at the same time around the world. And then even being able to chat with each other. And I think it's been, maybe this is the truer opportunity for yoga, you know, not just somebody that lives down the street, but somebody across the world who's moving and breathing and resting just as you are in similar ways anyway. Right, right. I, I, like so I love yoga. I, I did yoga a couple of years ago, and I don't think my instructor really informed me that it gets your energy moving. So how does that get you going? Because I remember, I remember crying. So what are, I, you know, without getting too far, because I know there's tons of benefits, but what's some of the key benefits that people, you know, think really understand when they start doing yoga? Yeah, that's a great question. And I'm always taken back to this image when I when I start thinking about this. Uh, when I was a little boy, there was a creek in the backyard. And my friends and I would go down and look at the creek and see things. And we'd stir up the mud, you know, with our hands or with our feet. And then, you know, you watch it eventually, the current flows and everything begins to settle. Well, that's ultimately what a yoga class can be. In that we move, we move, we move, we breathe in all these interesting ways. And then at the end of the class, hopefully there's time where you let that settle. And sure, emotions can begin to come up. All kinds of things can begin to come up. Um, Joy too, right? And uh, allowing them just to settle. It's like, oh, I've got all this in my life. What can I do with it? What can I do with it? I don't know what to do with it. I'll just move and breathe and see what happens as it settles out maybe in a new way. 
and maybe life is easier as a result of, especially if we can gauge that process quite a few times, not just once, but quite a few right. times. Yeah. Right. Well, how did your journey into what you do now, how did that come about? Well, I was a student of meditation for a long time. I had some people that were playing with that, uh, like youth group leaders playing with that when I was a uh, junior high person, I guess. And then in high school, my health teacher, uh, Terry Hale, uh, talked about biofeedback one day as she was talking about the nervous system. And one of my classmates literally pushed her out the room and said, go find those biofeedback tapes. We want to we wanna try this. And we did. 30 high school boys lying on this dusty floor. And she put the tape in. We went deep. I came back, wondered where I was and who I was and thought, this is something I need to pay attention to. And then a number of other, my other high school teachers were playing with these ideas too. Dave E.B., Ron Stegman, and uh, it's been a real gift just to continue just to follow us. It almost felt like I was being led. But in terms of yoga, I was big into meditation and Tai Chi, but I used to make fun of my mom for doing yoga. And I used to make fun of her for doing this stuff called Bones for Life, Movement Intelligence. And she'd show me the stuff and I thought handstands would save the world. I thought it had to be hard. I thought you had to do these martial arts like things. I thought you had to be doing weird strength things to really get things going. And she'd show me her things and they were so simple. And at that point in my life, stupid. I was like, that isn't gonna do anything. Well, fast forward a number of years, I've been doing all this strength stuff and I was getting older and some of that stuff was kind of wearing me down. because I was probably doing too much of the same thing all the time. And uh, somebody at Vitality gave me a little postcard for me to go check out uh, this stuff called Bones for Life, Movement Intelligence. and based on Feldenkrais method and uh, I didn't want to go. I was just like, one, I was too often the only man in the room for these trainings. I was like, I can't do it again. I mean, it's one, it's wonderful, but I need, I need friends and I don't want to do this. This is about stuff my mom did. And I went that morning having had a bunch of hip pain, tried everything in my toolkit that I knew how to work with that, my aching hip. And five minutes into this Bones for Life experience with Cynthia Allen, my pain was gone. And I thought, oh, she's the one that was teaching my mom these silly little things. And I thought, well, maybe I should check this out. If I got rid of my pain that quickly, that maybe there's another way of engaging yoga and martial arts. It doesn't have to be so hardcore. Maybe some softer ways could be helpful. And that's now what I do for a living, these softer styles. Kind of let go of all the handstands will save the world stuff. I do a handstand every now and then, but I don't teach it anymore. Right, right, right. So um, speaking of being the man, is, what would you say is the one of the biggest myths about yoga and, and um, that people just don't, or, or I should say maybe the men don't understand? Well, it depends on where you are, in the, at least in the country. Um, on the coast, it's, I'd say it's 50-50 in terms of men and women in classes. Um, in Cincinnati, maybe it just depends on what class you go to, maybe. Um, but a lot of the classes that I tend to go to, it tends to be mostly women. And I don't know why that is exactly. And I don't know why it is that way on the coasts. Um, when I think about all my teachers that have been doing, it's been half and half, I'd say, of men and women. Um, but anymore, you know, you can start to wonder what is gender anyway? I mean, that's a big right. question. And, um, but I don't know what's happening in terms of. Uh, why people are finding yoga and when and it seems to be kind of like uh it's that same invitation when we were like little kids right you found something that was interesting and then you know you forget about it and then something else and something else. oh and there's that thing again oh that was nice and then all oh, this other things these other things and all oh, that keep being led back to something that was a nice experience and for some strange reason we don't always just immediately go back to it Right. And I think that's the gift. It's certainly what happened with my story. It wasn't like I was all in on the first first few minutes of anything. It right. Was interesting. And then I eventually was drawn a little bit more. And I think that's the case with with everybody. Um, yoga's become big business, though, too. And so for for some people, it's and uh, it's all about having the, the toys and the clothes and the look and the right water bottle and you know, good for them if that's what they're looking for. You know, it doesn't have to be what I'm looking for. It doesn't seem to be what people that are coming to Vitality are looking for. 
you know, they're, they're looking for some experience themselves among friends, something that's easy, something they can begin to explore. And that kind of speaks too to how yoga is changing. Um, it used to be very pres prescriptive in the sense the teacher says this and you do this, and the teacher says this and you do this. Very little listening to one's own self. And uh, because of the influence, I think, of uh, thought in Christ method, movement intelligence, things like that, it's more like, well, what would it be like if you moved your leg like in this way? And how many different ways can you do that? So it's no longer like, I'm the teacher, I'm the one telling you exactly what to do. I might be inviting some ideas, but you play, you know, you find ways to play with that experience and get to know yourself in a different way. Right, right. And let's talk about, about vitality. And I know that's your, your I, I would say very uh, near and dear to you. So how did vitality really come, come about? I mean, can you share a little bit about the history of how it? Sure, yeah. I, I, when I was in uh, high school, I read an article or an interview with John Kabat-Zinn, who's a famous mindfulness person. I think he's in his early 80s now. Uh, he's trained a bunch of people all over the country. And I was, I was taken by it. Like it was literally that book that fell off the shelf at the West Fork Public Library when I was in <laughs> high school or eighth grade, somewhere around there. And uh, I, I was just drawn to it and then kind of let that go, right? And did other things. And uh, then eventually, fast forward many years after exploring all these other modalities, I was teaching meditation at the high school level at St. Xavier High School, where I'd been teaching religion for, taught it for 17 years. And, seeing these high school kids get such benefit by taking 20 minutes a day to do nothing. Essentially, that's what meditation is. It's the absence of doing. It's the opposite of doing. And I thought, my goodness, if these kids can get such benefit by doing nothing, what would our city be like if these simple, easy experiences could be available to people and not cost them a million dollars to explore, right? So it just so happened, a couple friends in a healing touch class that we were getting certified in, um, we were sitting out at Mil Milford Spiritual Center at this retreat, and we'd invested all these hundreds, thousands, thousands of dollars in this process, and uh, the teacher finally had us all journal, well, how, how are you going to use this stuff? And I journaled, I want to find a way to make this affordable and accessible, and all these holistic possibilities, and so people can find their own healing, and we can create a community, welcome a community of people that are interested in just sharing conversation about these things. And it just so happened that two other people in the circle wrote the exact same thing, not word for word, but, and we didn't know each other. This was a national training and it just happened to be in Cincinnati. And I was like, are you in Cincinnati? Are you in Cincinnati? And we went on a trip to Kroger during the retreat and we're like, <laughs> who are you? Like, I've never met you before. And, you know, got to know each other and, then uh, time passed again it wasn't all immediate and eventually uh, i stepped down from coaching at saint xavier i was ready for something new wanted to do something with this and sue sailors uh, had stepped out of her uh, full-time gig as a nurse and micah was ready for an adventure micah ritchie a massage therapist in town so we started inviting people to a circle that wanted to make this possible make these holistic endeavors possible and affordable and, um, people came running and we met and just shared ideas and met and shared ideas, even right here in my living room. And uh, eventually we found a space and um, we've had 10 wonderful years together sharing things and 125 yoga teachers have been trained in 11 wow. classes. Our 12th class graduates here in two months. And uh, so many people just beginning to find out what's possible when we just move and breathe and rest in easy ways that things can change. And uh, the big horizon for us is beginning to join that with gardening and um, beginning to help, help one another remember that our food comes from the ground and uh, to take care of our planet. And it's so easy to grow our own food and it tastes delicious, tastes even different in the grocery store. And that that can be yoga as well too, that that process of, of growing things and tending to things can be Kind of in some ways an outer yoga that helps us to understand what's happening within ourselves nurturing our own selves too yeah i love your program because like you said you mentioned a little bit about the um the food and stuff like that so how how did that how does that work for those who are not really familiar with that yeah good question so we we have a full-time gardening and gleaning coordinator sue Plummer, 
and uh, there's actually a whole uh, nationwide group, the Society of St. Andrew, um, which organizes gleaning, and gleaning is that biblical concept of when farmers had brought in all the harvest that they needed, they left some in the fields for people who couldn't afford uh, to feed themselves, to go and to take what they needed and, and live on that. And farmers still do that today. They allow, they bring in the harvest that they need and there's always stuff left. And they allow uh, groups like the Society of St. Andrew, which Sue works for, one of the groups Sue works for, to go and organize volunteers to, to get produce um, that otherwise would rot, you know, and just be wasted and to take it immediately to places where it can be used immediately. Um, shelters, food pantries, la soup, and that food is then made real, you know, is used immediately and people can benefit from it, especially people that might not usually have the, the easy ability uh, to get fresh local food. Uh, but we also help people just to realize that they can, they can grow it themselves. So for instance, our yoga training, yoga teacher training program for the 200 hour certification, that's a basic certification in yoga teaching. Um, we ask only for half the tuition in cash. So most teacher trainings are two or $3,000 in Cincinnati. They're like five or $6,000 in New York City, which is amazing. Um, Cincinnati, an affordable area of the world, right? And, uh, <laughs> But we asked for half that, so we asked for a thousand dollars, and then we asked for a hundred hours to give back in the community gardens or gleaning farms of the Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky area. So to help people, one, just realize where food comes from, that we can be assisting in our own community, and um, look how easy it is to grow your own food. Right, right. Well, Brian, what's one thing you really want to leave the audience with? Great question. I think that pain can, can go away quickly, that we can work through our pain through very slow, gentle movement. And I don't know, when I got into all this, I always thought that it had to be this huge change to get somebody out of pain or to change one's life. And yes, yeah, sometimes that works, but usually it's too overwhelming. It's too much for one's nervous system to take in. And so now research is showing that to get somebody out of pain, it can be as little as uh, two to 3% change is all that's needed. And that's about as much as your nervous system can take in anyway. So for instance, if my shoulder, say my right shoulder is very sore and I let my arm just hang at my side and everybody else can do this with me too. And I bring my right shoulder up as high to my right I'm ear. I'm doing it with you, just so you Wonderful. know. <laughs> And then I just let it slowly melt down and just kind of sense everything along the way. Mm -hmm. Full journey. And then once my shoulders melted all the way down, just pause a second and feel, listen, did I go too far? No, no, I felt okay. Well, this time, let's see what it's like to go half as far. And then bring your shoulder up and just slowly, easily then, like 10 times as slowly, let your shoulder melt down. You know, something within oneself starts to kind of figure things out. And that's that intelligence that helped us to figure out how to roll, roll over, and then to crawl, and then eventually to stand, eventually to stand and then topple over and get back up, and, and then eventually to stand and walk. And no, no one taught us that. Maybe we watched people a little bit, but there's something within us that wants to figure things out. And when we give ourselves slow, easy, gentle experiences like we had when we were children in terms of navigating ourselves in this gravity rich planet, that that's what begins to stimulate one's brain and one's brain, one's nervous system figures it out quickly, can figure out another way just based on doing something slow, gentle, and easy. And so the big term of course for that that's becoming popular in the medical world is neuroplasticity, that one's brain, one's nervous system, one's whole life can change uh, very, very quickly in a split second. Uh, so I think that's the message. And hopefully um, we're discovering that in just general yoga classes. I think a lot of people also shy away from yoga because, I don't know, if you just go to see a class, maybe in a gym or something, it's pretty hardcore. It's what I used to teach, right? <laughs> but not all of us are teaching that way. A lot of people have moved more to that somatic approach where things are gentler and easier and everyone in the room can participate and everyone in the room can benefit. Even the highest class athlete in the world could benefit from these kinds of gentle explorations because they're based on 
how one learns. They're based on that same learning that we've been doing since the first seconds outside the womb when no longer were we in the, the ocean womb. We're now on hard surface, we're on the earth. Even if that's in someone's arms, you know, we feel the weight of ourselves like descending downward and we begin to begin to navigate our way with that kind of learning. So you know, most yoga classes are beginning to discover that at least in some way. And certainly that's the kind of yoga we practice at Vitality. Um, and we try to make it accessible in that way and also affordable. Everything we do for our classes are donation based. So people can, can drop in as they wish, explore as they wish, meet friends. Even on Zoom, people meet friends. Uh, it's been kind of cool to see people even go, oh, that's you? I've heard about you for years. And now here we are in this class. They never would have met, maybe not never, but they, they have, have not met for years at Vitality in a space, but they can meet on Zoom and get to know each other. So, so even during this COVID era, they're great opportunities. Well, I want to, um, we're about to wrap up, but I want to um, make sure people know where to find you. So where can people find more information about you, your services and Vitality and stuff like that? Great. Uh, at our website, vitalitycincinnati.org. And we have lots of free videos on there. We have ways to access classes. We have information about all these people that I've mentioned and these different types of movement that I've mentioned. And um, you can kind of find, find what's interesting to you. And if you're confused, just reach out. And you know, somebody responds you know, very, very quickly. We even have a Tai Chi class right now. It's the only in-person class that we have uh, in a park in Walnut Hills at Green Man Park on Thursdays at 5.30. We ask people to wear masks. It's not mandatory, but most of us do. And uh, you can even, we even chat afterwards there too. Socially distanced chat, but uh, <laughs> great opportunity to even see someone's face just from their nose up and uh, begin to be able to read each other's eyes and, and talk with each other in that way. Um, but the, you know, the great benefits to in person and great benefits to Zoom too. Right, right. Well, again, thank you for coming on and sharing your wisdom. It was a pleasure talking to you. I can't believe how fast 20 minutes just goes by like that. <laughs> well, you make it so fun. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. I would love to have you come back. So I will always extend the invitation. Would you be willing to come back and maybe talk some more? Love to, Tanya. Thank you. I'll thank bring you. friends. Oh, I would love it. Yes. Yeah, I want to thank everybody who's tuning in. Make sure that you know that feedback is always welcome. Email us if you have any guests or show ideas. All the, the links that um, Brian mentioned will be posted in our comments. Best thing you can do is like, share, and subscribe. And remember, take things in stride, go with the flow, and create your own path. And again, thank you, Brian, for being here. And everybody who tuned in, check, and thank you for checking out this episode. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Share with us. What was one of your takeaways from today's show? Post your answers in the comments. Hi, everyone. This is Tanya popping in again to say thank you for listening to today's show. Coffee with Tea interviews are always free. And if you're enjoying the wisdom and insights that's being shared, please consider showing your support. By all means, buy me a coffee or become a supporter. Links are posted in the comments. And again, thank you for tuning in.